Hey. Hi. Say hi, everybody. Say hi, everybody. Yeah. Say my name is Layla. Yeah. My name is Layla. No? <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Long time no see, I've been in MIA, but as you can tell, I had my beautiful baby girl, Layla Marie. She was born on October 21st of this year, obviously. And um, I wanted to come on here, and I thought that my first video would be my labor and delivery story. I thought it would be a perfect video to come back with um so and for you guys to meet my daughter Layla so if you want to see or hear about my labor and delivery story then just keep watching yeah yeah all right so my labor and delivery did not go any way as I thought or planned it to be and that's expected whenever you have a baby or you know you're going into labor, you know you have this idea, this vision on how your labor and delivery is going to be, but it never plans out the way you thought it would be or you envisioned it. Um, so it all started on Thursday, October 20th. I went in for my 39-week uh, checkup at my doctor's office, and um, I went in expecting that I would have, you know, increased or moved up from my one centimeter fifty percent face that I was on the thirty seven week update or thirty seven week visit, um, because I was checked at thirty seven weeks and then at thirty eight weeks they didn't check me, but at thirty nine weeks they checked me again. So I thought that I would have progressed something, you know. I thought I was going to be at least two centimeters or two and a half centimeters dilated and like maybe sixty or seventy five percent phase. When I went in that morning, I was still one centimeter dilated and 50 percent phase i had made no gains in two weeks so because of that they decided to induce me thursday night on october 20th which was crazy i wasn't prepared to be induced on thursday night i thought that i would be induced on the on friday or monday but I had no idea that I was going to be induced that night. And the reason why I was induced is because I was considered high risk um, throughout my pregnancy and I was on blood thinners. And due to the fact that I was on blood thinners, they had to schedule my um, my labor just in case, you know, they could prevent me taking my medication or my blood thinners. They can kind of control it a little bit better. Um, so that's the reason why I was induced at 39 weeks. And I do plan on doing a full video on my high-risk pregnancy so that you guys can get a little bit more information on, you know, why I was considered high-risk and the story behind that. But anyways, so like I was saying, I had a, I knew that I was going to be induced at around 39 weeks, but I didn't think that it was going to be like 38 weeks and 6 days, you know what I mean? So I was completely in shock when she told me that I was going to go in that night to have um, my baby. Because, like, you know, you're pregnant for all that time. You're, you know, the whole time that you're pregnant, you're just imagining the day that you're going to go in and meet your little boy or your little girl. And at that moment, it just hit me like I am, you know, 24 hours away from meeting my baby that I've been carrying for nine months. So it was so surreal. I was so excited. I could not wait to go in and have her. So I went home and I got my things together, took a shower. Um, I did my belly cast that night, which made me two hours late for when I was supposed to arrive to the hospital. I was supposed to be there at like 7, I think 7.15, and I didn't get to the hospital until 8.30, so almost two hours late. But I had to do my belly cast because I wanted something to remember how my stomach was when I was pregnant with her. So I did it. I did my belly cast um, right before I left to go to the hospital. I ran to um, Cheddar's, got me my steak and baked potato because I really wanted steak and baked potato before I went in, and I scarfed it down in the car with a spoon. Fork. <laughs> and I arrived at the hospital at around 8.30. Uh-oh. What's the matter? What's wrong, pumpkin? You okay? Are you hungry? Doesn't she have the cutest cry face? Oh, baby. Baby. What happened, Layla? Yeah? You hungry? Mommy, I'm hungry. Oh, yeah, she's hungry. Okay. Yuck. 
So we'll be back. I got a nurse. Bye back. <laughs> Chunky butt. All right, I am back. I had to feed this little one because she was hungry. But um, anyways, back to the story. So, so I arrived at the hospital around 8.30ish and I checked in, did my paperwork and all that. And then once I checked in, I waited, I sat in the waiting room and waited for the nurse to call me back to my room. And I probably didn't even wait for like 10 minutes and I was called straight back. Um, and I went into my room and I spoke with my, with the nurse and we, you know, discussed my labor and delivery plan or my birth plan that I had, um, had envisioned. And I went over, like, I made this really, really nice uh, birth binder that I was planning on using throughout my labor and delivery. That didn't go so well at all, but we'll get into that in more detail in just a moment. But anyways, um, so we went over my birth plan and she talked about, you know, the induction process and all that. And it was, I mean, I had an amazing nurse. She was so nice. Um, so I got to my room. I changed out of my regular clothes, got into the... Um, to the hospital gown and she told me that at 10 o'clock after we you know went over everything and you, the anesthesiologist or anesthesiologist came in to speak with me and then you know the charge nurse came in like everybody came in to speak with me and had me sign off on paperwork and all that um we it was about 10 o'clock and she started me on my first dose of um Cytotech, and that was to go ahead and get my cervix ready and prepared for the Pitocin or for labor and delivery. Um, so what Cytotech is, it's an incredibly small pill. I can't describe to you how small the pill is. It's like a, like a little piece of lead, like that tiny. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. And it's a small pill that they insert in between your cervix, and that helps to soften and ripen the cervix um, before they give you the Pitocin. So she got me started on the Cytotech, and with the Cytotech, you can't you get up and walk for the first two hours that it's in place, and then it's supposed to be in for four hours at a time, and I was going to get three doses, so I was going to get, I was going to be on the Cytotech for 12 hours before they start the Pitocin, and so I wanted to know, I asked her if, you know, with being on the Cytotech, do I still have to be on the Pitocin if my body starts to react and have its own natural contractions? And she said, no, if your body produces its own contra contractions and they don't feel it's necessary to give you the Pitocin, then I won't get it. Because I was already contracting, um, but nothing, you know, no real contractions, but I was having contractions from before. So I was hoping that with the pill, you know, with the Cytotech pill being inserted, that I wouldn't have to go the route of the Pitocin and I can go in to labor naturally. Um, so I was glad that I knew that that was possibly an option, depending on how my body reacted to the Cytotech. So when she placed the Cytotech in, um, I felt fine. It didn't hurt being placed. And she checked me again at that time. And I was still 2 centimeters, 50% e-phase um, or 60% e-phase. So I didn't make any gains or any progress from when I left the doctor's office to when I got to the hospital. Um, so I was on the Cytotech for, from 10 a.m. to 10, 10, I'm sorry, 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. the next morning. And the Cytotech was dreadful being inserted because the first time it wasn't bad but the second and third time that it was given to me what happens is I believe the medication makes your hoo-ha sore um so every time that she would insert it it would hurt really really bad after because it was so sore from the medication um so that's why I didn't really like the Cytotech that much because it hurt so bad when she would insert it but after that I mean you know having it having it in you didn't feel it because the pill was so small and it would dissolve after a while anyway so I didn't mind it I just didn't like it being inserted it hurt like shit so anyways um so after the Cytotech 10 o'clock that morning you know they checked me again and I was still two centimeters, 60% e-phase. I made no progression with the Cytotech whatsoever. So they said that even though I didn't make any pr progression, that I would still be placed on a Pitocin to see if that can, you know, get things moving for me. You falling asleep? <laughs> so I was um, put onto the Pitocin at 10 a.m. and the nurse, we know, we were talking and stuff and she was like, I asked her, I'm like, how soon after being, after being given the Pitocin would I actually start to feel real contractions? And she was like, you know, some people, they immediately start feeling contractions with the medication. Some don't feel contractions at all or it doesn't help them whatsoever. 
I immediately started feeling contractions right as she started giving me the Pitocin. Like, as she cooked it up and it started going through my IV, I'm not joking to you, my body responded to the Pitocin so fast. So I started having contractions. They were very consistent. They weren't painful, but I can feel the tightening and the pain. And I have a high to pain tolerance. Like, I can go a long time without requesting medication. Um, so they were it was painful, but it was tolerable. So I was getting the contractions right away, and um, I was on the Pitocin for about 10, 11, 12, 1. So about three hours on the Pitocin and having contractions. I went from being in bed. I was trying the um, birthing ball to see if that helped. And being on the birthing ball, it did help, but it was easier for me to soothe myself with the when I was getting the contractions because I could move and bend over and be out of bed. But the only thing is that being on the birthing ball was kind of uncomfortable because the monitor that they had on my stomach to monitor her heart rate and my contractions kept moving. So the nurse had to keep coming in and out of the room to readjust the monitor. So that was a bit annoying. Um... But anyways, so after about three hours being on the Pitocin, my doctor came in to check my cervix and to see how far along I was and to break my water. So she came in and she was like, oh, you look like you're in pain. I said, yeah, I am, I am in pain. You know, the, I am starting to get contractions and stuff, but it's bearable. I, I'm fine. And she was like, are you sure you don't want to get the epidural? And I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I don't need to have the epidural. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, so I was like, she was like, so are you sure you don't want the, um, the epidural? And I'm like, no, I'm okay. I'm like, I'm able to bear through the contractions right now. I, I'll be fine, you know? And she was like, are you sure? Because I'm going to break your water. And so I'm like looking at her like, woman, why are you asking me so much times if I want the epidural? I'm like, I said I was okay. Like, stop asking me. So I was starting to get annoyed with her. And she was like, um, you know, whenever you break your water back, that's going to go ahead and speed things up. So you might be in a little bit of pain and discomfort afterwards. And I'm like, well, I'm like, if I do start to feel things pick up, then I will definitely request the epidural. But I'm like, as of right now, I'm okay. So she was like, okay. <laughs> and so she went and she broke my water. And that was the worst pain ever. Like, I don't, I never thought it was going to hurt for them to break my water, but it hurt so bad. And I think it hurt more so because my area down there was already sore from the Cytotech, um, that it was just uncomfortable and it was just painful. And it just, so she broke my water and immediately after she broke my water, my contractions went from like a level of a three to a four to like 10 immediately like I'm not even joking within seconds it went to the worst pain ever I could not deal and so she checked me after she broke my water and she's like yeah you're still at two you haven't progressed so I was so frustrated because I'm like here I am you know thinking that the Pitocin is working because I'm actually getting consistent contractions and I have not progressed from the time I left the doctor the day before till one o'clock in the afternoon now on the 21st so I was like literally pissed off. I was in pain. I was pissed at her because if she did tell me that it was going to hurt, but I didn't know it was going to hurt that bad. So she was like, you know, you look like you're in a lot of pain now. She's like, are you sure you don't want the epidural? And I'm like, yes, call them now. I need the epidural. So the doctor didn't even get to leave the room good before I was like yelling that I needed my epidural. I was in so much pain. I was in the worst pain ever after they broke my water. I mean, my contractions were, it went from being like three minutes to four minutes apart to like a minute apart and being super, super intense. So I'm like in bed and I'm like hysterical. I called my mom and I couldn't even talk to her. I just called her and she answered and I just burst in tears. And so that made my mom panic even more. And cause she wasn't with me. She was actually working cause she didn't think that I was going to progress so fast. So I called my mom and I was just in tears. I was crying. The nurses were checking on me. They checked my app, like, I think within 30 minutes after they broke my water, they checked me again. And I had went from being two centimeters to six centimeters within like 30 minutes to an hour. That's how fast my labor progressed after she broke my water. And then after she broke my water, or after they checked me and I was six centimeters, I was like still in a lot of pain. So finally they were able to get the anesthesia, uh, anesthesiologist in the room to get me my epidural. And thank God for the nurse that was helping me breathe through my contractions while they were administering the epidural because if it wasn't for her, I don't know how I would have gotten my epidural because I was in so much pain. I mean, the pain was just off the charts like it's indescribable how much that pain how much pain I was in 
but I was able to breathe through my contractions fine and you know I was able to get my epidural okay and it kicked in somewhat right away like it definitely took the edge off the pain once I got it but it's still I was still in pain but it was just totally more bearable than it was before so the, uh, the anesthesiologist left after they gave me the epidural and I was still uncomfortable and I was still in a lot of pain and my nurse wasn't understanding why. She was like, you shouldn't be feeling that much pain after the epidural. So they called the anesthesiologist back. They gave me like an extra dose of a stronger version of the epidural through, through the epidural. And that helped a little bit, but I was still feeling pain. It took a while. I think I was I, I was given like three to four doses of that medication. I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me through my epidural just to take the edge off. Um, before I actually started to feel like really comfortable and felt, you know, at least 50% better because I was still in pain even after four doses of the medication. And so my nurses were trying to figure out why I was still in so much pain. So I'm like, let me check you again. Mind you, this is like an hour after they broke my water, hour and a half after they broke my water. And when she checked me again, I was like nine centimeters and 100% effaced. So from one to like 2.30, I was at nine centimeters dilated so at this time I'm like I had called my um, my birth photographer when I was when they told me I was six centimeters and I was like you need to come now because I had been texting her the whole night and I'm like I'm not progressing at all like up to 10 o'clock I'm like I'm not progressing I don't know when you want to come because I'm like I'm not really progressing and usually whenever you're in active labor that's when she would come in to start doing the, the pictures and stuff but when they told me I was six centimeters that quick, I was like, you need to get here like a sap. Like yesterday, you need to get here. So she ran over and she came in and then she was there. And after they gave me my epidural and stuff, you know, she was there to start taking her pictures and all that. And I was so thankful for her being there because she definitely walked me through and helped me through my um my labor and delivery through text message when we were texting all night. So I was truly appreciative for her. Um, and you know, and everybody else that was there, my mom, his mom, my aunts and cousins and stuff were calling and checking in on me and making sure I was okay, telling me everything was going to be okay. And the nurses there were awesome as well. So she came to take the pictures. They thank God, cause I was worried that she would miss everything. Um, so by the time I was nine centimeters, they called my doctor in and now this was another, my male doctor, Dr. Morris, he came in and he checked me again. He's like, yeah, she can start pushing. So I started pushing and when I started to push, they noticed that her heart rate started to decline. And he said that even though I was at nine or 10 centimeters dilated, my cervix hadn't fully gotten over the baby yet. So, or fully hadn't gotten over her head. So they were like, we're going to wait a little bit and let you labor down. So they put me on my side and put the peanut ball in between my legs so I can labor down and try to get that cervix to go over her head. So I did that for a little while, but every time they put me on one side to another, I would become, she would become in distress and her heart rate would start to decline. So then they tried me on my right side, same thing. Her heart rate started to decline. So they put me back on my back and uh, Dr. Morris came back in again, checked me, and I, he said, let me try it and see how you push. So I pushed one time, and he said, every time I put, well, when I would push her, the cervix will still come down with her head, and he said, that's not good. And then plus, when I started to push, her heart rate was still declining, and so he thought that the cord was either wrapped around her neck or her torso. So he called it right away, and he was like, you know what, we're just going to play it safe and have you in for a C-section. And I was bummed because being that I was high risk and I was on blood thinners, having a C-section was very, very risky for me. I could have easily lost my life if things had turned for the worse or if I had bled out. So I was really, really scared to have a C-section. My mom, when she found out that I had to, that they were going to you know, give me a C-section, emergency c-section she just lost it she left and my aunt had to come in and kind of like help me through it because my mom was so scared for me which I can completely understand because it, it was definitely risky for me to have a c-section so anyways um they got me ready for my c-section they gave me this horrible shot to take I, I think it's to calm your 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 um digestive system so you don't throw up during the c-section and it was just the most nastiest thing ever. So they gave me that shot to take. They got me ready and prepped for the C-section. They got Rashid ready and his scrubs and stuff for the C-section. 
and they took me back to the OR and within a few minutes um, I was able to see them eat the big light that they used in the operating room I can see my reflection through that light so I saw when they cut me open I saw my tissues my fat everything it was really cool I was happy that I was able to see it because I even asked the um the anesthesiologist that was in the operating room if they use the clear drapes rather than the blue drapes and he said at the hospital they don't and I was kind of bummed because I really wanted to see them cut me open and take her out but I was still able to see her through the op operating room light so that was really cool but they cut me and I was feeling perfectly fine um, all throughout the surgery um, when they cut me open I saw when they took her little butt out and they put her on my stomach and I mean I'm thinking about it now and I just want to start crying because it was so beautiful like I was like finally she's here and I think I'm getting this emotional because she's in my arms and I'm just grateful for her but um they took her out and they took her over to the little baby um station and dad got up and was able to see her right away they got her all clean up and just to hear her cry was so beautiful I immediately just started bawling my eyes out when I heard her cry for the first time and they were like she's a healthy baby girl the cord wasn't wrapped around her neck it was actually wrapped around her torso and that's why um her heart it was declining every time I pushed but she was so healthy she was born at 6 uh 30 or 6 39 p.m and she was seven pounds two ounces and 20 inches long so and they brought her right to me after they got her all cleaned up and stuff and I just kissed her and I was so happy to finally meet her and she looked so much like Rashid when she was born. She looked like her dad so much and she had no hair um, or very little hair just like me when I was born but she was just everything that I could imagine and just so precious and so sweet and so quiet and after she got to me she didn't cry. I was able to do a little bit of skin to skin um, after and then once you know she was stable and I was stable and I was able to spend time with her they took her and um, dad to the recovery room after while they were closing me back up and that was that and so right after um, the only thing after they were you know putting me back together and stitching me up I did start to feel a lot of pain when they were doing that and I don't know what happened they weren't really telling me and I think they were just they weren't telling me for my safety and so that I wouldn't start to freak out but um after I went to recovery they did tell me that I did lose quite a um, quite a bit of blood and I don't remember it so I believe that I did black out because I do remember like I felt like as if I fell asleep but I don't think I fell asleep I think I did black out from losing the blood but they took really really good care of me and I knew that I was in good hands because the doctors seemed really really calm and I mean I know that's their job but they just seem you know calm as ever and they just were talking to me and walking me through everything that they were do doing so I was very grateful for the doctors and the nurses that I had in the operating room but that's basically what happened. I wish I remembered more of my labor and delivery, but everything happened so fast that it was just like this. So it was, it's really hard for me to remember everything. And I had to talk to, I had to go through like my text messages to see like what was going on during this time for me to remember what was going on. I, you know, had to talk to Rashid and he kind of like told me like this happened this happened this happened because a lot of it I didn't remember um, The medication that they gave me for the pain kind of made me kind of out of it So I wasn't able to remember everything um, But nonetheless, I remember the most important thing was when they brought her to me and I you know laid my eyes on her for the first time and That's the most special part of it. So that basically wraps up my oh, Sorry, baby Sorry, did mommy wake you? <laughs> That basically wraps up my labor and delivery story. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now I'm going to be including some of my birth photos that I had professionally taken throughout my labor and delivery. Um, they were taken by a good friend of mine, um, Chanel Rojas, in the by Tampa Bay area. She is a Tampa um, birth photographer. She also does family sessions and lifestyle sessions. And what I like about her type of photography is it's un um posed so it's definitely natural and organic and and i just love her she's the sweetest person ever um so she took some beautiful pictures of me and my family and the whole and just captured you know my labor and delivery 
perfectly. I couldn't ask for a better, you know, photographer and better pictures for me to remember the most, you know, amazing time of my life. So I'm very thankful for her. I will be leaving her information down below if you're interested and you're in the Tampa Bay area and you're looking for a good photographer. Um, like I said, she does more than just birth photography, but she does specialize in birth photography and that's one of her favorite things um, to capture. So I definitely, definitely recommend her and like I said I will link everything for her down below and I will be including the pictures at the end of this video. So without further ado let me just formally introduce you to my baby. She's sleeping but This is Mrs. Layla Marie, my beautiful daughter. She is actually seven weeks old. Well, she'll be eight weeks tomorrow. And I am so grateful for her. She is such a perfect baby. She doesn't give me a hard time at all. She laughs and smiles with me. And she's just everything that I could imagine. I'm so grateful for my daughter. She is my best friend, even though she's only seven weeks old. But... I love her so, so much. She's so beautiful. She's perfect. I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed. So, Layla, say hi to my YouTube family. Say hi, YouTube. Say you'll be seeing more of me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you burp? Huh? You burp. Yeah, mommy. <laughs> yep, yeah, but you'll be seeing more of Mrs. Layla. And more videos soon but anyways stay tuned to see um, our birth photos <laughs> anyways I want to thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for being patient with me throughout this time I know it's been a while since I posted a video um, but as you can tell I had been enjoying my time with my baby and learning how to be a good mommy and just learning her so it has been a little while but I'm definitely definitely back and ready to be you know putting out a lot more content for you guys I have I think four or five videos that I will be posting here so shortly. I just wanted to definitely get my labor and delivery video up first, and then I will be posting the rest of her videos and our videos. So thank you guys so much for being patient and sticking out with me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comment section. And also, please like this video if you did enjoy. And if you're not a subscriber, then definitely subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and sticking through this video. I know it's kind of long, but I do appreciate your love and support. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Say bye, Layla. Say bye-bye. Mommy love you. Mommy loves you. Why are you watching me side eye, girl? <laughs> Hi. Hi, princess.